In this video, I'm going to show you how to manage all of the audio inputs and your stream audio and video file audio and all of that inside of OBS. So let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to churchsetup.com and uh, I'm Ryan Scott. I'm going to help you today kind of decode the audio of OBS. If you're not careful, uh, and you're, you get something hidden and it's still on and it's really easy to mess up um, a live stream audio feed and probably more so than even the video that you're seeing, the quality of the video, the quality of the audio is so much more important. Um, you can have, you know, subpar video quality if you have really great audio. But even if you have the best video quality, if the audio is bad, people aren't going to want, aren't going to want to watch. Uh, and that's a lot of people, they, they get distracted by the cameras and all of this and they forget about the audio. They leave the audio separate. And then you get into a live stream and someone's speaking, you can't hear them or someone's singing and one person's a much louder than the others. Or you play a video and the video is way too loud so that it's clipping or it's too quiet. Or you have one source that's really, really loud and then another source that's really quiet, which when you when you transition to the quiet one, everybody turns up their volume and then suddenly you switch back to the loud one and you blow up everybody's speakers. It's just not a great experience. So learning how to do the audio right and keep it uniform and mixed really good is is really important and understanding how OBS handles audio is also important so it's going to be a little bit different if you're on Mac or if you're on Windows Windows you'll have desktop audio that you can route to it and everything we're not going to get into uh, that complex of uh, coverage here but I just want to show you some of the things that I see people do that that gets them confused and their audio sounded bad so I'm going to take you over to OBS and we're going to get started into this so now that we're in OBS, what you're going to see is my audio sources over here. And uh, like always, we have our scenes, our sources, our audio sources, and our transitions, and then some controls. We have the preview, which is just a preview, and the program, which is actually what is going out to your live stream. So it's it's really important here. I'm going to click something down here and click unhide all just to check and see. No, I don't have anything hidden. So what I see a lot of people do at the very beginning, especially if you buy one of the church uh, setups, uh, multi-camera kits, especially the ones that come with the, with the static cameras, is that you're going to have an audio feed that, uh, that OBS detects from every camera that you turn in. So for example, you see right here, I've got Blackmagic device. That's the camera um, that is showing my face. <laughs> so, um, that's this camera here. And if I was to turn this on, what you're going to hear is um, some really bad audio from that from that camera mic. And this is what the camera mic sounds with by itself. Um, and this is my audio interface coming in. So whenever you add a camera and you switch to that scene, if you're not aware that OBS sometimes tries to do this, um, you, you can hear the audio and you're like, what in the world is going on? It can sound really, really bad. So what I do, and uh, when, we, when we program these things, we always do this automatically. But what I do is I always mute all of the ca camera microphones. All of the microphones from any audio source besides my audio interface, I want to mute. And I don't just mute them, but I turn the audio all the way down just in case someone accidentally unmutes it. Um, it's still not going to come in. So I turn all of that. And then for my cameras, what I normally do, once I have them muted and turned all the way down, I'll click this little gear right here and hide them. So when they're hidden, I can't accidentally enable them. Somebody else that comes in can't accidentally enable them because they're hidden. To see them again, all you have to do is right click around here and click unhide all and they come back but there might never be a, a need for you to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and hide that again. Um, so here you have the audio from the audio interface. Now with uh, our kits, we ship an audio interface called a Scarlet Solo, which is not what I'm using here in my studio. In my studio, I have a Rodecaster Pro because it's, it's kind of a podcast setup. I'm not at the church. And uh, so whatever audio interface you're using, the steps will be the exact same. They're just going to be renamed different. So in order to add your audio interface, what you're going to want to do is click settings, 
and then click um, audio and in here is all of your global audio devices you can see I've got desktop audio disabled um, in Windows this will probably be enabled because Windows allows you to do a lot of other things I'm actually on Mac right now um, but then I have desktop 2 disabled I have everything disabled as far as audio devices except for my Rodecaster Pro which if you open this up, you're gonna see all of the choices that I have. Um, a lot, when when you do this in one of our kits, you're gonna see the Scarlet Solo somewhere in here. Uh, but you just choose that right there, you click okay, and then it's gonna add it here. See, it's, it's added as the name is Mike and Auxiliary. Um, so if I go in here and look at it again, you're gonna see Mike Auxiliary Audio is Roadcaster Pro. I'll, I'll add another thing, the multi-channel channel here, which I'm not sure what, effect it's going to have on your audio but i just want to show you um if we go in now since i added another one you can see mike auxiliary and mike auxiliary too um so that's working like it's supposed to now if you have multiple audio inputs that you're working with it's important or it's good to right click on it and click rename and i'm just going to name this the road uh roadcaster stereo wow there we go. Now I I don't have <clears throat> I don't have any problems selecting that one. I'm gonna go back in because I don't want that other audio source in there, and I'm just gonna disable that. But that's how you would get your USB audio interface inputted in, and then you you can adjust the volume as needed here for the input. One more thing about adding an audio interface, and this is one of the things that a lot of people they struggle with with OBS because they don't know this is um, an option. But when you're dealing with HDMI video and you have, you know, a bunch of different cameras and they're sometimes really close to the computer, sometimes far away, um, the audio file or the audio signal is usually really fast. Um, and so when OBS is trying to unify all of this um, or really any streaming software that you use, there's usually an audio delay. Um, you have to have a really crazy system in order to not have some kind of audio delay. So uh, if you see that in your recordings or your stream that the audio is not matching with the mouth, uh, you'll click this and you'll go into advanced audio properties. And right here you see um, there's a sync offset. So with my Rodecaster Pro, under normal circumstances, I would have to set this at like 80 to 120, sometimes 200 milliseconds off so that it, the audio will be delayed to match up with the video. And that's that's an important thing if, you're, if your audio is messed up. It's not always messed up, but in, in a lot of systems, you have to have some kind of delay on the audio in order to make it match. How do you know how much? It's trial and error. So just go into advanced audio properties, um, put in you know 80 or 200 or whatever, um, apply, come back out, do a recording, and uh, speak into it on video and try to, you know, enunciate so that you can then go look at the audio or the video recording and you can, you can look and see, you know, is the audio really close? Is it too fast? Is it too far delayed? And uh, you'll just have to try over and over again different values until you end up with the exact right value um, so that your audio and video are exactly in sync. When it comes to playing videos, um, what you're going to see and uh if i if i switch to this um you're not going to see it in obs so i'm actually going to trick obs here and i am going to add this scene here um i'm going to add uh yeah i'm going to add the obs scene here if I transition to this, you're no longer going to see my desktop. So I'm having to, I'm having to um, trick the system here. But if I was to play this video, so um, normally I'm just going to cut over here so you can what see. What are all the this things you video. need to create a I'm really great live streaming you setup OBS for your church? Now that the video is playing, um, you can see when uh, when we transition to this here. So what are the all the things you need you to create a really great live play. streaming setup for your church? Um, We're going to talk about that today I have on churchsetup.com. Thank you for being here. So let's get into it. Um, if, uh, so 
this this is what's going on. This video is playing. So when it comes to live streaming and, setups, uh, there is a ton see the video of playing options. There, and you're you going to have audio all kinds here. of different ways that um, you can go, different pieces of software you can use, whenever different you pieces switch of hardware, to another scene, different cameras, different capture cards. There's so many different options. The video However, audio when you're looking for exactly the what you need, is it really away. comes down to about four things. It'll only so show up once you switch to that scene. Today. And we're so, going to show um, you what just you be need aware to set if you're up playing a, really a video once you play that video for your it's church. going to now, pop in an audio file down here. First off, you need a camera. So if you, you need don't a camera want of some video kind. Now, audio I recommend to play, we have another video about this. You're going to want to disable that before you transition to the scene, which means setting it up beforehand. Otherwise, when you start, when you transition it's over, you're going to hear the audio for that video. And as you probably just noticed, when the video audio is playing, can't hear me very well right um so that's something to keep in mind if you transition to a video it's going to pop down the video thing here if you don't want the audio to play you're going to have to mute it if you do want it to play um and you transition to the video and you do want it to play you can just manage the the volume like normal audio into your stream let's take a look at this so in this di so that's um, that's how you manage the audio, and that's really the most difficult parts about it is um, is making sure that you're watching what is playing, and if anything is ever crazy, you might have to right click and click unhide, and if anything is ever just really crazy, the audio is not great. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is to always look and see. Um, if, uh, let's transition to this scene real quick. If you are, um, there we go. If you are, uh, hearing audio from another source, you unhide the camera audio will show up that could possibly cause, cause some interference. interference. Um, but that's, that's really how you manage the audio in OBS. It's really that easy. Now, when it comes to mixing, this is an important thing. When it comes to mixing the audio, so you have two people singing together, one's real loud, one's real quiet. That often happens when you don't have a good mix. Um, and so that happens before it gets to OBS. You cannot fix that kind of thing in OBS. You're gonna have to fix that in the mix that's coming into OBS, which is usually on the house mixer. So what a lot of people do, they have their house mixer, they run out of that into the Scarlett Solo. The Scarlett Solo connects to um, OBS much like the Rodecaster Pro. However, there's no mixing of the channels in the Scarlett Solo. You have to do that on your mixer. That's why I tell people, if you're going to run out of the main mixer, you need to do it with a subgroup. So an auxiliary group or something like that so that you can go onto the mixer. And if someone is super loud and someone else is super quiet and you want to, you want to level those out, you can do that in the subgroup mixing options. And then the audio that's coming to OBS is mixed really well. But that happens outside of the system. That's something that you do on your mixer. So same thing with, you know, if, if uh, you're importing some kind of um, music from like an MP3 player or something, whatever's coming through the mixer, you cannot adjust it individually in OBS. You have to do that in the mixer. That's a lot of people don't understand that. That's why I'm taking so long to explain it. I know you get it though, but um, hopefully this video was helpful. Thank you for, uh, for being here. Subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or whatever you would like us to cover, you can send a request to support at churchsetup.com and we'll get to your questions as soon as possible. We hope to see you on the next video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later.